wage and salary survey. We all know a salary is a form of periodic payment from an employer to an employee which may be specified in an employment contract. In this lesson, we will explain the concept of wage and salary survey, the two types of compensation surveys and the sources of collecting survey data. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain concept of wage and salary, to understand why conduct a survey, describe the informal survey and external survey method, discuss compensation survey data. The pay structure of a company depends on several factors such as labor market conditions, company's paying capacity and legal provisions. The term wages implies remuneration to those workers who do manual work. The term salary is usually defined to mean compensation to office, managerial, technical and professional staff. Under the Workmen's Compensation Act 1923, Wages for leave period, holiday pay, overtime pay, bonus, attendance bonus and good conduct bonus form part of the wages. The term allowances includes amounts paid in addition to wages over a period of time including holiday pay, overtime pay, bonus, social security benefit etc. The basic wage in India corresponds with what has been recommended by the Fair Wages Committee 1948 and the 15th Indian Labour Conference 1957. The various awards by wage tribunals, wage boards, pay commission reports and job evaluations also serve as guiding principles in determining basic wage. There are several principles of wage and salary plans and practices. The important ones among them are wage and salary plans should be sufficiently flexible. Job evaluation must be done scientifically. Wage and salary administration plans must always be consistent with overall organizational plans and programs. Wage and salary administration plans and programs should be in conformity with the social and economic objectives of the country like attainment of equality in income distribution and controlling inflationary trends. Wage and salary administration plans and programs should be responsive to the changing local and national conditions. These plans should simplify and expedite other administrative processes. Wage and salary systems should have a relationship with the performance, satisfaction and attainment of goals of an individual. Now the question is why conduct a survey? To hiring and retaining competent employees, to recognizing pay trends and defending pay practices in a court of law it is a must. The success of an organization depends on skilled employees who see in their jobs the opportunity to promote their own self-interest as well as the interest of the organization. Contributing employees are those who help solve organizational problems and thus help improve output and reduce waste. The survey enables the organization to know what rates of pay the market demands and to direct its effort toward maintaining and even improving upon these market participation rates. The user must be able to recognize whether the survey collects data from the same sources or significantly similar sources each time. All employers must recognize the critical relationship between the important employees place with regard to their pay and the litigious nature of the American society. An employee can use such acts as Title VII, the Equal Pay Act and Age Discrimination in Employment, the Americans with Disabilities Act or simply breach of contract as a legal basis for a lawsuit. There are two main types of compensation surveys, that is informal and external. Informal surveys are conducted in an informal way and can vary from personal contacts to specific arrangements. 
for exchanging information with a number of local companies or with companies in a particular industry, as even with a wide cross-section of firms. The exchange method of obtaining data has major advantages. It can provide exactly the type of reliable information on existing rates of pay which firms seek, as well as giving them an indication of the likely trends in increases of pay during the year. But real usefulness depends on the types of arrangements for exchange and on the information obtained. Whether the pay survey is commissioned through a consultant or by the enterprise itself, the approach is the same. There are three methods of wage survey. 1. By job title. 2. By job description. And 3. By job evaluation. In the job title method, the company collecting information gets the pay details for similar job titles in other companies. A wage survey based on job titles does not provide accurate information. The job title method may be used in those cases where the job content and the titles are more or less standardized. Job description method is the most common method used in the pay survey. The comparison is made on the basis of the job description. The wage data in other industries are collected for these jobs which have the same job descriptions in the company doing the pay survey. Job evaluation method is an improvement over the job description method. The descriptions are collected for the jobs selected for wage survey in other industries. These jobs are evaluated under the same plan that was used by the company undertaking the wage survey. Collection of information is the most important aspect in a wage survey and requires careful planning. To build up a competitive wage structure, it is necessary to know what are the rates prevailing for similar jobs in the same industry in the area. Unless the wage structure is competitive, it will be difficult to get and retain efficient workforce. The purpose of a pay or wage survey is to obtain the desired information. After making the decision to perform a survey, an important step is to decide how to collect the survey data. If the survey is informal and relates to one or a small number of jobs, the telephone is the simplest and most widely used approach for gathering data. Telephone surveys are useful for collecting data on a relatively small number of easily identified and quickly recognized jobs. Telephone contact can be made quickly with compensation specialists in comparable organizations throughout a particular region or even on a nationwide basis. The mailed questionnaire is the most common technique for collecting formal survey data. It not only permits respondents to complete it at their discretion, but it allows time for careful thought and deliberation in job matching. A widely used source of pay data is the Internet. Anyone with a computer and Internet access can obtain pay data online. Probably the best technique for collecting data is the completion of a questionnaire during a face-to-face -face interview. In the job matching process, the interview may review relevant organizational records, job descriptions, pay structures, organization charts, and possibly even observe a job in action. Although the conference is one of the least used techniques for collecting compensation data, it has certain strengths. The conference technique also promotes closer understanding among those responsible for compensation management, a greater awareness of business similarities and differences, and an increased willingness to cooperate when interaction and data flow are vital. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Wage and salary survey aim at finding prevailing wage rates in the industry. Right or wrong? Right. Formal survey can vary from personal contacts to specific arrangements for exchanging information with a number of local companies. Right or wrong? Wrong. Probably the best technique for collecting data is the completion of a questionnaire during a face-to-face. -face. 
right or wrong right before we end let us briefly revise what we have studied so far the term wages implies remuneration to workers who do manual work the term salary is usually defined to mean compensation to office managerial technical and professional staff the term wage and salary administration denotes the process of managing a company's compensation program formal and informal surveys through telephone for example could be undertaken to collect data on benefits like insurance medical leave vacation pay etc and so offer a basis on which to take decisions regarding employee benefits published sources also provide valuable information regarding industry wise trends in salary structures in and around the country a wage and salary survey provides information as to what other organizations that compete for employees are paying the survey could cover all the jobs within an organization obviously costly and hence avoided or limited to benchmark jobs jobs that are used to anchor the company's pay scale and around which other jobs are slotted based on their relative worth to the firm